Marinella Davida and Davida Triaka, thank you both very much for joining us at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy. Thank you for you. And thank you for your presentation. Uh, we have a few questions on a few issues and we'd like to get your opinions. Uh, how do you think uh, cultural diplomacy can effectively be implemented uh, to raise public awareness on problems and solutions in, in areas such as in the environment, uh, climate change, and sustainability? Uh, well, I think that uh, cultural diplomacy could certainly play a, a big role in uh, deploying, at least uh, in spreading, you know, climate change awareness and uh, um, in general awareness about the environmental problem. I don't know, actually I was thinking at the EU climate policy um, experience and maybe, uh, you know, the EU could provide a good example of maybe uh, what are the best uh, practices or the uh, best example abroad, you know, think to countries like China or a developing world where, you know, environment is not among the priorities uh, of, you know, e economy and, uh, and, other, and other national uh, national challenges. So I think that, uh, you know, discuss about environmental pro problem and show, uh, and show uh, what have been the challenges and the benefit from the EU experience maybe could be uh, one of the way to use cultural diplomacy to spread. And, and also if you think of the very way in which the, the discussion about climate policy uh, got into the uh, international agenda, uh, it, it reminds me a couple of examples of, of uh, incredible speech that, by the way, young generation had in front of the United Nations. You can remember one in particular of, uh, it was uh, the son of David Tanaka, which is an important, uh, a prominent scientist, that in front of the EU nation said that you have the responsibility to provide us as young generation a future, an affordable future. So uh, in the last analysis, you can consider this as the highest example of uh, cultural diplomacy. There were uh, not just people from different cultures, but also people from different uh, generations that were trying to find a common way, a common point of view. It was hard, and it is hard sometimes, and climate change with that, by defi as a definition, uh, involves people around the world, uh, as you see from, from, from the flag behind you, is uh, need to, to find shared, and when I say shared, I mean really shared solutions. That's the only way. As, as we said before, it's unaffordable, it's unbearable to think that the solution to climate change can come from Europe rather than from US, rather than from China. We should work together. What we should avoid in, in, in the next few years is to, to have division, is to have different point of view. We should have different point of view, but we should find a common opinion to, to find, to address the problem. Absolutely. Um, you kind of addressed my next question, which is, do you think it's more effective to focus on local or international scale when implementing sustainable measures? I mean, uh, we had, we, uh, the, the climate and in general, the, the European policy itself provides the answer. I mean, we should uh, use uh, both uh, top-down and a bottom-up approach in order to, to provide a solution to such a complex problem. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's impossible to think the first approach in absence of the second, or, or, or vice versa. Uh, what we think, what we should do is uh, to provide local solutions in developing countries, for example, and uh, while developing a shared point of view, a shared solution on a global scale. So both of them, definitely both of them. One cannot sustain, uh, cannot be sustained in absence of the other. So there should be both of them. And if I, if I can add how the uh, international experience under the UNFCCC, you know, the forum where the climate change has been discussed in, uh, at the international level, as uh, this experience uh, um, showed that, uh, for example, the failure of the Copenhagen conference, you know, big promises, big, promises, big uh, targets and discussion, but some countries were not ready yet to 
commit to climate change. So maybe we can start from the national level and then to go because otherwise there there will be an empty, uh, you know, agreement or something like that. So the national commitment it's uh, it's a fundamental part of the process. Of the global commitment. Okay. Okay, so this conference is uh, about global trends and creative economics. Does environmental sustainability have a place in creative economics? In which way? Well, it's uh, the, 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 the rule, the, the key, the, I'm trying to, to provide you a, um, quite a simple answer. Uh, the answer is the green growth. Uh, we've we've just discussed about the importance of green growth in relation to this. Um, a couple of years ago, I had a lecture at, uh, in London when uh, we've been told that probably the only way they said the, the most effective way, but during the year, I, I'm, I'm increasingly convinced that that is actually the only way to provide. Uh, an effective uh, solution to climate change is uh, to do it together uh, um, an effective uh, growth from a, uh, from an economical point of view you cannot you cannot entirely support the the transition toward a better uh, toward a, um, a, a decarbonized economy uh, if you don't have an economy that that's the point uh, green growth, in, in this case, is, is the answer. Um, I, I don't know if you, if you see what I mean. It's, um, it is fundamental uh, to keep providing growth, especially in, in developing countries in, or in countries that are struggling to, to find their place in the world. Uh, teaching them, supporting them. Teaching is not the right word, it's, it's arrogant. But supporting them in, in uh, in the obtainment of a uh, transition toward a, a low carbon economy, that, that that's the point. You don't have an you don't have a low carbon economy if you don't have an economy. That's that's the point. And just to play with the words, you know, I think that uh, sustainability includes a certain in a certain amount of creativity because we have to rethink, you know, the way that you uh, have been used to to go. And so it's a, it's a, it's a certain, it's, a, it's a fundamental part of the you know creative economies. Do you have any advice for young professionals that are interested in working in this sustainable development? Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> I think that the you know the best advice could be to believe in what you are you doing. So I think that the, you know the in in my experience, people that uh, that believe in uh, in sustainability principles, in the environmental uh, protection and something like that, they. Uh, are more likely to be successful in, uh, you know, in understanding and in provide creative solution or, uh, I don't know, other... No, I've got actually a couple of suggestions, but I will keep them for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm young, so I'm trying to do my best myself. No, jokes apart, uh, there's a fundamental rule, uh, uh, coming back to the creativity aspect of, of your question, um, relate in relation to the rule of startups, uh, startups uh, which are uh, newly and uh, young companies uh, founded often by young professionals or young person that uh, again are uh, looking for their, their, their pathway in the world uh, plays a fundamental role. Uh, startups are an answer. Uh, clean techs, which are uh, startups active in the field of environment and of sustainability, uh, provided most or many at least of the solution that we are trying and uh, we are experiencing current day. So it's really important. All right. Um, our last quick question is: What do you think is the single biggest challenge to sustainability and coming up with solutions and implementing them? Uh, for me, the political will. I think. No. At the moment, uh, yeah. Maybe countries are trying to cope with other priorities now, and so you know the 
politicians set aside, you know, environmental issues maybe, but it could be an opportunity also for recovering or to, uh, you know, have a, a more competitive economy. So I think that now the biggest challenge is to convince that, uh, to open, at least to have a political commitment. In my view, the biggest challenge, uh, in last analysis, I think it's the only challenge is, is to, to try to shift the approach to these issues in general from a, a, a specific point of view, from a target-oriented point of view to a broader vision. What we need to have is we, we need to change our mind. The, the question is how. Uh, all right, well, thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate your opinions. And Thank you. 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 Thank you.